about graves disease it is very important to understand a basic concept of graves disease there are certain key words of this graves disease from where you will actually crack the question within just uh, one minute so you read the few lines and you see what are the options and you can mark easily so diffusely diffusely enlarged diffusely enlarged warm moist gland remember these words diffusely enlarged warm moist gland with features of toxicity what do you mean by features of toxicity that means unnecessary unwanted features of hyperthyroidism and along with that with palpable thrill with palpable thrill at the upper pole i will explain all the things to you but before that you need to understand that these are certain keywords that may be seen in the question and you can mark now what is the concept of graves disease what are the risk factors for graves disease let us try to understand but if you talk about association more than 80 to 90% of the cases it is autoimmune in nature so when you talk about autoimmune there are certain hla hla dr3 hla b8 hla dr5 these are the classical hlas which are associated however it could be associated with pregnancy also it could be associated with lithium toxicity also it could be associated with viral infections also and there are certain cases when you don't know why it has occurred so this is what is something about an introductory note on graves disease next is let us understand the concept of graves disease so graves disease is associated with a very important concept of ctla4 what is ctla4 in graves disease in graves disease there is something which is known as ctla4 what is that cytotoxic t lymphocyte antigen 4 now this is what is the most important culprit cytotoxic cytotoxic t lymphocytic so t lymphocytic antigen 4 now when we talk about this cytotoxic t lymphocytic antigen 4 it is going to stimulate b lymphocytes so there is stimulation there is stimulation of b lymphocytes now when the b lymphocytes are stimulated what will happen they will definitely release something and then there is release of tsi what do you mean by tsi this is what is very 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 simple thing that is known as thyroid thyroid stimulatory stimulatory immunoglobulin so thyroid stimulatory immunoglobulin or one more word for this is tsh tsh rab what do you mean by tsh rab this is thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies receptor antibodies now what are these antibodies these are gain of function mutations type of antibodies which are stimulating the thyroid gland so they actually cause diffuse stimulation and since there is a diffuse stimulation of the gland therefore the gland will increase in size and that is why we say it is a diffuse what students goiter when it is hyper functioning in all the ways that is the reason that it produces certain unnecessary unwanted life threatening features also and the word for that is toxic so diffuse toxic goiter or graves disease this is what is the simplest concept you should understand that tsis they are the hallmark product for this graves disease if tsi is not there it could be anything but not graves disease now when we talk about presentation let us try to understand so we have a goiter so we have a goiter with features of hyperthyroidism so goiters with with features of hyperthyroidism and when you talk about goiter it is diffusely enlarged gland why because it is homogeneous stimulation of the complete gland so diffusely enlarged it's not a nodules which are actually culprit here it's a complete gland so the complete gland is diffusely enlarged and warm and moist apart from that there are features of hyperthyroidism so what are the features of hyperthyroidism it is very 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 important for you to understand and then there are other features also so when we talk about features of hyperthyroidism you know we have amenorrhea so there are females who have amenorrhea then you have palpitations 
palpitations then you have tachycardias and arrhythmias so tachycardia and arrhythmia then one very important thing is heat intolerance heat intolerance then there are other things like proptosis not so exophthalmos it's proptosis proptosis exophthalmos so exophthalmos there are others etc 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 there are other features also like warm moist skin then you have diarrhea so you can get to see diarrhea etc etc hyper exaggerated pulse but apart from that there are certain important features which are exclusive to graves so what are the features exclusive to graves so features exclusive features which are exclusive to graves now here you get to see a lot of features what are they let us try to understand the first is graves of thalmopathy so we have graves of thalmopathy and what do you get to see in graves of thalmopathy we have four important things but the reason for them let us try to understand there is spasm of the upper eyelid so because of the spasm of upper eyelid it feels that someone is constantly staring so since there is spasm of the upper eyelid there is infrequent stare so we call it a stelvax stelvax infrequent stare this is again very 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 important then what else there is a lid lag so if you ask the patient to follow the fingertip you will see that there is a lid lag so what is that known as von grafis sign so von grafis sign so what is a von grafis sign this is upper eyelid lag so upper eyelid lag this is what is von grafis sign normally the upper sclera of any patient is not visible but due to spasm the upper sclera is visible so what is this known as visible upper sclera so visible upper sclera this is what is known as dal rimple sign so this is what is known as dal rimple sign and then when you ask the patient to look straight and then you will tell that patient that okay you're looking straight i'll ask you to concentrate suddenly on a finger that i bring close to your eyes so you want to check whether your eyes are able to accommodate a close you can see object or no and this is what you are testing for near accommodation so loss of near accommodation loss of near accommodation and what is that known as loss of near accommodation this is known as mobius sign students apart from this there are other signs also but they are not that important so you get to see graves ophthalmopathy then you get to see graves dermopathy what do you mean by graves dermopathy you get to see pre tbl pre tbl myxedema now word myxedema here is a misnormal why because myxedema is referred to case of hypothyroidism where there is swelling so here you can get to see similar swelling in the tbl region apart from that what else do you get to see i have already told you get a palpable thrill and why you get a palpable thrill because of the increase vascularity and this is what is very 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 important the next important thing that we need to understand is there are certain skeletal changes so what are the skeletal changes so when we talk about the skeletal changes what are the classical skeletal changes that we get to see the first very important thing is we get to see thyroid acropachy what do you mean by thyroid acropachy thyroid acropachy means swollen metacarpals so swollen metacarpals what else do you get to see here do you know that thyroid is associated with osteopenia osteopenia but here you get to see a bone reaction like you see in cotman's triangle in giant cell tumor of the bones here you also get to see subperiosteal subperiosteal bone formation subperiosteal bone formation so the word bone formation students here is a misnomer actually this is what a subperiosteal bone reaction so these points are very 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 important so we get to see skeletal changes we get to see the skin changes we get to see the eye changes apart from that so clinical suspicion when we talk about the workup so we have a clinical suspicion and along with that there are certain biochemical investigations so what is that biochemical profile which will help you remember there is increase in t4 and what t4 students increase in free t3 free t4 and decrease in tsh and along with that along with that increase in thyroid stimulatory 
immunoglobulin this is what is very 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 important now when we talk about radioactive iodine scan so radio iodine scan so when you talk about radio iodine scan also known as thyroid scan when do you do this is it done for all remember it is optional nowadays seldom do we do this so when do you do this scan remember let me tell you one very classical important point that if you are sensitizing or if you are giving a radioactive agent to your body you are sensitizing the body towards that agent and thus there is an increased risk of future lymphomas or different cancers so the point is do we need to expose them the answer is yes if you are in doubtful diagnosis suppose if you have a diagnosis in your mind that this is a graves it's pointless going for radio scan or thyroid scan suppose if you don't know the diagnosis but you have decided that i am removing the gland so if you have planned total thyroidectomy then also there is no need of thyroid scan why because now unnecessarily why you are exposing yourself to the radioactive agents so when do we go for thyroid scan thyroid scan is indicated if we have a doubt with the diagnosis and our plan of surgical action is not total thyroidectomy this is what is very 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 important